Hey everybody, Michael Litt, co-founder and CEO of Vidyard. I'm joined here with my good friend, Jamie Shanks from Sales for Life. Jamie, thank you for joining me. How are you today? Mike, thanks so much for the invite. Awesome. So we're having a little cocktail here and we are talking about the changing face of the world of sales, especially in this new reality of COVID-19. One of the things we were just talking about, which I think is, is fundamental to the shift, is that in-person sales is obviously not possible at current and i don't have any insight into when that's going to change and so obviously using something like video using something like video art is is very important because it's very difficult to build those personal relationships and grab body language and all those important things jamie you were just talking about a framework that your team uses um, to, to kind of work through this modern sales process i'd love to hear a little bit more about that I look at it as three competitive advantages. Basically, if you think of mediums of communication, one of them, face-to-face -face meetings, has just been taken off the map. So you've always used email and you've used phone. So now I have to explore new ways of communicating. Why do I explore with video? Number one is that I'm able to humanize myself like I'm in a face-to-face -face meeting. That's a big challenge. There's, there's no contextualizing an email. And many times it works uh, against you is the, the anti-contextualization of reading an email that people could read body language in a face-to-face -face meeting. So I get to humanize myself. I'm a real person. I'm trying to add value. You can see the sincerity in my face. The second piece is going to come to synthesis, which basically means I've been in the sales community for 20 years. I, for us, we've worked on 400 global engagements. I'm trying to take everything that I've learned and distill it in a way that you can, uh, you can understand it, that you can move forward with it. And I can do that in under a minute. Now, they, they always say, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth then a million. Because if I tried to write down in an email what we're saying right now, it'd be a five paragraph, paragraph essay and you'd never read it. And then the last is going to come with my intent. So depending on tools that you use, you would send an email out, it would go into the ether, you would have no idea, is the customer interested? What are they interested in? We use video to basically segment accounts. And you say, okay, my time is precious. I have this total addressable market or I'm working these key accounts. I send out ideas, who and which companies does this resonate with? And I need to focus my time there. And so those three competitive advantages has made video it, nothing will replace face-to-face, -face, but what it's doing is it's giving you back that medium of communication. Yeah, we always say video is the next best thing to being there in person, right? And in a world where you can't be there in person, it's, it's really the only choice, right? And I always think about these traditional businesses that were almost laggard in adopting digital communication technologies because, you know, the traditional business meeting um, you know, the traditional presentation, the traditional go and walk the halls and, and, and present to that team was the core way of doing deals, especially when you start getting these larger enterprise deals. And, and that's not currently an option, right? And so I love, I love the framework. I love the approach. How do you think this is going to ultimately shake out over the next, you know, one, two, three years? Are we going to go back into these, you know, those previous habits? This is your world. I'd, I'd love to hear what you're hearing from clients. I, I, I can think off the top of my head right away of a couple global enterprise customers where the, the, the measurement of success, of the leading indicator measurement of success, was they were actually monitoring the uh, receipts and expenses of travel in face-to-face -face meetings on a weekly basis as a leading indicator to customer engagement. I can think of dozens of companies where the sellers have, a, they, they have a quota and which, how much face time they're spending with customers. So that's not an option now. So now I'm gonna put myself, Mike and I are CEOs of businesses, right? We're always deploying capital. I'm gonna put my, my mind to the CEO and the CFO who start to recognize when things like COVID lift, and the world is now selling again. I look at my cost of customer acquisition. I look at my, my margins of acquiring 
customers or servicing customers. And then I start to question, there is clearly a better, faster, cheaper way of doing the exact same thing. Because also the buyer has evolved to this process. No longer are they forcing me to come in, do your pitch in the boardroom. They've had to evolve as well. And so there will be a value exchange back and forth that will be conveyed this way. And I think there'll be no going back. Like, as you deploy capital, you'll just look at it and you say, I can't have a sales motion of six figure salaries jumping on thousand dollar flights every single week, 50 weeks a year, when we can do the same thing through technology. And when it comes from a prospecting motion or a servicing customers in an asynchronous way, like we're doing here, I can teach Taylor and take control, you know, steal from the challenger sale here. I can do this through this medium easily. Yeah. So it's, this is almost a forcing function to almost pressure organizations into realizing that there's a more efficient way of, of doing things. And, and even thinking about our own T&E budget, as I'm sure you have as well, you know, that's now gone. Right. And, yep. and where does that get spent? That gets spent in, in the digital context, it gets spent in, and for us, it's, it's user acquisition. It's all sorts of other vehicles. One of the things I find so fascinating about this reality is that, you know, here I am sitting, I'm sitting in the attic of my house because um, it's the quietest place, but I've been on so many calls with customers and people where I'm now experiencing where they live. And it, it, it's hard to get to that level of, of personal relationship in a restaurant or an office, you know, in the more traditional sales context. And so, you know, Zoom meetings are a great way of, of really understanding someone, their habits, their surroundings, the stuff they, they build around them is a more personal expression of themselves than you'd ever get anywhere else. And so I think that's such a benefit. And I'm, I'm curious if you're hearing customers and, 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 uh, and some of your ecosystem starting to talk about that benefit and that opportunity. And if it's even something that you're starting to think about and baking into some of your programming. I'm on 10 hours of Zoom calls a day. And so I'm really getting a glimpse. And because our customers are global enterprise, you now have hundreds or thousands of sellers and you get a real glimpse at almost at scale as to their environment. And ironically, I think the really kind of foresighting sellers are seeing this, they can use it as a competitive advantage. What do I mean by that? Their, their home offices are perhaps outdoor patios uh, indoor outdoor patios, or they've got decorations of their university alumni or s sports interests that are now sparking conversations. Here's something that I've been doing for years in using video, either in a platform like we're doing now with a Zoom or in using your tool with making uh, you know, a, a video for a customer. I'm sitting here at Lake Simcoe, north of Toronto, Canada, at our cottage. I constantly make videos from out at the lake. Why? Because it shows that I have interests outside of work, which are far and few between, but cottaging is one of them. And it shows that, you know, I'm a real person. Uh, I can be somewhat approach, I, I can be approachable and I'm normal. And so I use the cottage and I can't tell you how many times people comment, whether it's a post that I did socially or it's a video I made for them. By the way, looks amazing, very cool. Where is that? Like they just want to know more about Lake Simcoe and the conversation starts there. And so I use it as my own little competitive advantage. Yeah. It's almost like you can create a unique bond. Like I think about some of the best relationships, actually the way you and I met was on an airplane. Interestingly enough. Yes. I mean, the, the, the idea of that is like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even imagine. He was my random seatmate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, so we've been doing this for seven weeks. And the idea of traveling somewhere and packing my bag and going through that process is like, I don't see the 20. I have I'm sitting on a couple te tens of thousands of dollars of flight credits because we had, I had engagements in Europe that were canceled. I had a uh, personal trip to Turks and Caicos with the family got canceled. So I'm sitting on all these flight credits. There are two years worth of credits. I don't know when it, it the one of the best ways I've ever heard it explained is Mark Cuban talks about world 1.0 and world 2.0. Yeah. And he basically, the analogy that he's made is if you were to have flown on September 10th, 2001, how different 
that flying experience was on, on September 12th. And that was just in one segment of the world, which was you know the, the travel industry, the invention of the TSA, the invention of the locked door with the pilot. I used to as a kid, I used to sit with the pilot, you know, like all these things changed overnight. So I bring that up because everything is now a global change. So the sales world is is going to be impacted as much as the airline was, airline industry was in September of 2001. So uh, you kind of just have to uh, accept it. And then just, once you accept that there is going to be a world 2.0, you just yeah. start planning for how you can be better in 2.0. And it's like the 12 steps. I've just kind of got there already. Like, okay, the world's just going to be there. How do I accelerate through it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, the, the thing I, I remember so fondly about that time we met on the airplane is that we had some shared contacts and also shared interests. I don't know how we started talking about uh, racing cars, but that was the thing that <laughs> I remember. Like you know very, how to race a car and I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, but then got into skiing and all those things. And, and to your point on taking videos from the, the lake, you know, so many people enjoy being on water right? That, that's just like such a natural thing. And, you know, you're never going to lead with that in a conversation. Do you like, do you like being at the lake? Do you like being at the cottage? But if that is the backdrop of your video, now all of a sudden you're inviting somebody into that and you're inviting somebody into this, this, this personal context. Now, I, I, I love that. I think that's so valuable. And that's something that you just can't get in an email. You can't get in any other context other than video from the location you are using this amazing thing. That's the internet. Um, now you said 10 hours of zoom meetings a day. Uh, not a joke. Literally. I know. Uh, I know. This is my reality. I, I got zoomed out. Um, uh, probably the first week. It Your was ears like, start to hurt. Like, they Oh yeah. Yeah. I had earbuds in all, like I, I'm afraid like AirPods are going to be some type of ear infection. Um, <laughs> And, and my, my world is like, I'm a very active, energetic person. And so I'm always in meetings around the office. I'm going from meeting room to meeting room to meeting room. I'm active, I'm moving around. And like, I'm a, I walk to work. I'm a 15,000 step a day person yeah. and that's gone away. Right. And so the zoom meeting thing has been tough. Um, how are, how are you using asynchronous video? So pre-recorded video using our product. Um, because what we're seeing is that a lot of people are realizing that the, the initial instinct when going work from home was let's jump on a Zoom call, let's jump on a Zoom call, let's jump on a Zoom call. And then there was this realization like that's not sustainable because nobody has any time to do anything because they're on Zoom calls all the time. So let me send you a video, watch that on your own time and then respond accordingly or before a meeting even, like everybody in that meeting, we're gonna send a video, look at the content. In that video, it's gonna talk about expected outcomes for the meeting. And then we're going to shorten that meeting to 30 minutes. Are you, are you seeing any of that workflow? Is that being valuable to you? How are you interacting with customers with it? Yeah, for us. And then what we're teaching and deploying with customers and then what they're doing with their customers. First, I'm sure people are hate this, this, uh, this analogy of mindset skill, set, mindset, skill set, and toolkit. But it is so critical to understand. First, you have to ask yourself a fundamental question. In the mediums of every type of communication, from the first initial touch point, to pre and post discovery call, to sending a proposal, contract, and then launching a new customer, you have mediums of communication, email, phone, and so forth. If you were to take a step back and ask yourself, is there a better, smarter way or that I could do this, you then as you begin that journey, you'll recognize that each and every one of those touch points could be aided through the power of uh, video. So when I first got you know, really comfortable using video, I like most natural people saw it as a vehicle of lead generation. So what did I do? I used it in this face-to-face -face video or I would make a tip video which kind of did a screenshot of a tool like LinkedIn with my face at the bottom. I would use it to start conversations. I would either deploy those one to many or I'd deploy them one to one. And then I started to recognize that how can I prepare people for a discovery call? And then I got used to wrapping up a discovery call and recapping the call, knowing that the buying committee was guaranteed not always on the call, right? They were cross-functional. There were many people part of the buying committee. So I didn't want 
my key stakeholder or champion to be the sole source of education navigating some giant enterprise company. So I needed to arm them. That then led me to understand that this comes with proposals. The context of the pricing, the context of the uh, process deliverables and outcomes. I need to set that pace. Contracts. One of our customers started using video as a, a company that when they were deploying a contract, one of the biggest bugaboos or challenges in their business was the customers were constantly asking the same five questions and their, their contract to close rate was a one month timeline. So they thought, how do we shrink that? So what they did is they started making videos to deploy and they made a list of the top five questions that a customer would ask as they submit a statement of work. They would actually make videos of those five ideas and submit them with the contract. What it ended up doing at scale was shrinking their contract time by two weeks. Now, when you're deploying thousands of contracts or millions of dollars a month in contracts, you're talking about a massive cash flow change in a business. Wow. So the reason I tell all this story is any and all means of, of an email, if you were going to convey information through email, take a step back and say, can I do it differently? And then it will unlock this mindset that at every stage of a buyer's journey to the point of buying and for the life cycle of that customer, why am I not establishing a relationship this way? When we, as a sidebar, just, I know I'm on a tangent here, so I'm on a roll. No, this, this is amazing. This is amazing. Keep going. This we, um, in 2000, in, on Halloween of 2017 was the first time that we won a global contract with Microsoft in their demand response. It was a, a program where we'd be deploying in five super centers around the world, um, thousands of sellers. I didn't get to physically meet any of the key stakeholders until January, 2018 in Dublin. So this gap in communicate, this, this time period was say three months from when we signed the contract, but it had been months and almost a year up to that point of developing a relationship. I get to the Dublin office in Leopardstown and I see our key stakeholders and they come give me a giant bear hug. Hey, like, it's like they would known me for years. Why have they known me for years? Because I've been doing this every single yes. communication. They knew me like I live next door. Now, fast forward, two years later, check out my LinkedIn profile. This is the largest customer LTV in the history of my business because we've done project after project after project. We've developed relationships at Microsoft at a human level. And that's the important piece. Man, that, that story hits me right in the feels. That's, uh, you like that? I, 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 like, well, A, a obviously, um, yeah, to your point, there's, there's no way to do that over the phone. There's no way to do that via email or text. Because you're facing and, yeah, exactly. There's, there's no personality. There's no energy, like the energy, like you are such an energetic, personable, charismatic human. Um, you know, it, 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 you're perfect for, for this type of communication. Secondly, the idea of anybody giving anyone a hug right now, strangers of it is like, <laughs> That's you know, such a, such a forlorn concept. Um, and I just think that's awesome. Now it does, it does bring me to a, a point I'm very curious for your opinion on because there are always naysayers, there's always challengers. Of course. And there are people that are very comfortable meeting in person, but put them on a camera, um, you know, they see themselves, hear themselves, whatever it is, they're just not comfortable, right? The, I think the number one reason that people weren't comfortable turning on their, their, their webcam during Zoom calls was that. And that, that is probably the number one reason why people aren't willing to use something like Vidyard in their sales process. What do you say to those people? I mean, this Microsoft story like has to be part of it, but what's the, like, what's the thing that just brings and them And I'm gonna give line? you the most uh, difficult of situations. Three of our customer engagements right now sell to what's called the CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer. So don't give me the excuse, my buyer is different, because if my customers, global enterprise customers, selling to the CISO, and they're watching the videos, this works. Now, here I'm gonna do a little role play. Mike is going to be a VC. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and now I- I like I'm, this role. Yeah, and, and 
and I'm communicating, uh, I'm communicating with Mike and I, I choose, I choose not to turn on my camera. I struggle to develop a strong relationship, but if we were on a phone call right now, if we were on a conference call, a traditional 1990s conference call, or if I was in the boardroom pitching Mike, do I get a do over? If I, I screw up the PowerPoint slide or if I uh, say something the wrong way, do I get a do over in a boardroom? No, okay. But with video, there's a re-record button. Like, here's the thing is, uh, this is the easiest to understand. Unlike the, the traditional face-to-face, -face, unlike a conference call, what is said is live, what is said is real time. For some, they need practice, they need help. Take a moment, back up. What I did when I first started, I, I, I wasn't a one take kind of person at first. I might put something, my, my camera's right here, but what I would do is just put a sheet of paper in front of me and have some bullet points. And I would just try to hit home the bullet points. If I screwed up, I could press re-record. It wasn't until I realized that the customers enjoyed the ums, the ahs, the authentic part of actually talking. So, because it actually sounds really unnatural when you don't pause, when you don't blink, when you don't have like, it should sound as choppy as you and I are talking yeah. right now. I just go, go with it. Um, yeah. But if you don't feel comfortable with it, you have a re-record button. Yep. Yeah, man. You know, that, that right there is perhaps the most undervalued aspect of what this is and, and what communicating with asynchronous and on-demand video is, is, is that retry, that opportunity to, to do it over again. And to your point on scripting, point form, I love, so I'm a point form talker. I've seen you present. I know you are a storyteller. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'm, a ram I'm a rambler. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 you're not. No, no, no. The, I, I, I tell context and energy, right? You tell stories and, and that is, that is a beautiful way to present. I mean, in, in live audiences or otherwise, you're going to love this because the team is working on functionality. Um, it's been called teleprompter. It's been called other things where you can actually inject a cadence, a script, whatever into the workflow of recording videos for customers. That, and so that will help a lot. Yes, a ton, right? Especially in that initial process, because there's that stage fright, right? And, and I think, but as soon as you realize that you're human, and as soon as you realize your recipients are human, and ums and ahs are natural ways in the cadence of speaking that are imperfect, but perfect in their imperfection, and that's what creates these human connections, especially now when we, we can't, right? Like, we have to do it digitally. That's the valuable stuff, right? And that's what I think is going to get us through this. We can't, we can't hug, but we can say ums and ahs on videos, and and yeah. that's just a phenomenal, phenomenal story. Jamie, you know what? I'm going to call it right there. Thank you, because awesome. this has been absolutely amazing. I really, I really do appreciate your perspective. We got to do this again. I'm glad we. Uh, well, cheers. I I sent you a video while I was barbecuing some uh, <laughs> some Beyond Meat burgers at the cottage the other day. So I'm, I'm glad we did that. And uh, let's keep this thing going. Cool. Fantastic. So I'm going to. Cheers, man.